Hey guys, welcome to another episode here at Garage Time TV. I am Marshall and today we are jumping back on our 1974 Volkswagen bus camper conversion project. Now we have done most of the mechanical work to make this a Subaru conversion. So if you have not caught up with the entire series yet, you can do that uh, here above. I will drop a link to the playlist so you can watch it from the beginning, from the day we got it, all the way up to this point here. So we've got a lot of our suspension taken care of. Um, the Subaru engine is in. Um, we actually just did a valve seal replacement on that uh, this past weekend. Um, it was very labor intensive, but not very interesting to watch. So I just did all that off camera. We had a pretty bad burning and oil leak. So we fixed all that with those seals. So we're actually gonna start working on the exciting part, which I know a lot of people are anxious to see, and that's the inside. Now we are in the garage with the garage door closed. Um, it is raining outside, and so I don't really wanna push the Fiat out. So we're a little tight on space, hence why I'm sitting here in the bus, and you guys are on the hood of the Fiat, the 124. So we're gonna jump inside here. Um, I wanna show you a couple things. I know this is pretty anticipated, is where we're gonna make it unique and ourselves. Now you might see back here, I'll show you guys. We have Z-bed brackets. Now I ordered these off of Samba. A guy had these used um, out of a, a different bus but these are solid metal brackets, super thick material, already pre-drilled holes, already assembled, uh, paid a really good price for these, but these actually come up and that back part lays flat. So I can show you guys here. Let me prop you up. So how these work is this is gonna be bolted to the floor and this comes forward just like this. And at the same time, the back falls down. So as it comes forward, you pull the bed all the way level and there you go, boom, it latches perfectly flat. The back seat becomes the middle of the bed. So this is kind of tentatively where we've set the brackets for that. This one will obviously do the same thing. I think that's kind of where we're gonna place those. But that's just tentative placement. So we're going to hold off on installing those that are just kind of a test fit. They're sitting in there on the ground, not bolted or secured, anything like that. Before we do any securing of brackets or beds or anything else, we have to do the floor. So I think what we're gonna do is from the floor up and end up with the ceiling last, or maybe not last, I don't know. But as of right now, we're gonna jump into the floor. So what we decided to go with is 36 inch by six inch wide vinyl planks. But before we lay those down, we have this material. It's a padding kind of underlayment stuff. Uh, pretty easy to cut and it's got a little grid pattern on it so we can cut it um, to fit the bus. Um, it's two millimeters thick um, so we're going to put that down first and this is the floor we're going to go with. It's uh, called a drift wood um, but again 36 inches by six inches wide and we're going to lay it across the floor here but first we have to put that underlayment down first. Now we want that underlayment so it'll one it's noise reduction because it's foam. It also makes the floor a little softer and it's also gonna take up for the unevenness of our floor. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick pause and talk about today's video sponsor, Vintage Car LEDs. Are you nervous to drive your classic at night just because your headlights just aren't quite bright enough? Head over to VintageCarLEDs.com and check out their wide variety of headlights that fit in our old classics. You can check out their different products, their apparel, you can even compare the models, contact them with questions, but more importantly, what will fit? If you go here to the middle of the screen, every make and model you could possibly imagine, even for our Fiat design here. We'll go down to a Volkswagen, which is what we've got. We'll go to all, all these options. We're gonna go down to the transport. We're gonna hit search. And here you go, all the headlights that'll fit our make and model are here, different sizes, uh, bulb brightness, all give you variety and options to drive safely at night. Now here's a good part, is I've got a coupon code for you. You save 10% with the keyword Garage Time TV at checkout off your entire purchase. Again, use a coupon code Garage Time TV on your checkout for 10% off your entire purchase. So let's get back to the video. So our floor has this rib pattern just for structure, so it's not just a big flat piece, but it's also got these edges here all the way around the outside, across the back, even here in the middle of it's solid. Um, you come across the front here, and this kind of shape all the way up to our vents are back here. So what we have to do is use this underlayment right here to make up a little bit of this gap. It'll also bridge the gap between all of these and then the vinyl plank on top of that should go all the way across. That's kind of my thought behind that. Um, so it'll 
end up being flat level from here all the way across to the other side. We do have a little bump there in the corner, so we'll take a piece of plywood and a hammer and hammer that flat a little bit, the plywood, or a two by four possibly, lay that flat. But what I think I wanna do is, with any kind of floor, you wanna start in one corner. I don't really wanna start in that corner because it's got that patch that we did, and we're gonna end up having like cabinets along the back there, I think, up behind the driver's seat. So I'd much rather start here in the front where we have full panels going across. So you kind of get the idea here that the padding will be underneath this and it will bring it up level to here. The ultimate goal is to possibly match like that where the seam is and we'll, that underlayment will make up that gap and we'll start here so we have as many full length pieces as possible so we have as minimal cutting. Now the other thing is I don't want to have a straight line across of this. So just like flooring in a house, we'll offset it by six inches or so and just kind of have a diagonal pattern across. And I think we're also going to carry it up in between the walkway as well, uh, just to make it more complete and cohesive. So we've gotten some materials besides our flooring here. We've got some stuff here on our messy bench. Don't mind all the mess. A little leftovers from that valve seal job. You don't mind the PB blaster. So we've got the underlayment tape. This is actually going to tape those underlayment pieces together. And we also have a flexible style liquid nail that goes in a caulking gun, which I also happen to have one of those. So this should be more than enough. Um, the flexible is what I'm really interested in. So it's a good temperature in here. It's nice and manageable. So I think this key here is to start measuring out these. We'll take a blade and start in the back and then come this way because it's gonna be nice and square, easy to do here. Um, we'll start off with this back piece, just cutting it to fit until um, it's nice and snug and then glue that panel down and the next panel to the next panel. Now finally, before we get started, I know there's a lot of talking, is we're gonna put our last piece of sound deadener right in the middle. Our radiator actually lays underneath here in the middle. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but it's up up there. So when the cooling fans kick on it, that hot air comes up to the floor and then dissipates out the side of the frame rails. And so this middle floor gets a little warm. So I wanna make sure that we keep that cool away from our adhesive. So our last piece of the sound deadening is actually gonna go right there in the middle. So we're gonna sweep this out, put that on, then start with the underlayment, that down in here and work our way across. So let's do some time-lapse and finally jump into this project. Now that you kind of know the game plan. I originally thought I was going to start in that crevice there and work my way across. But after looking at the panels, just four across covers almost the whole thing. And I'd rather take one panel and kind of trim it to fit, plus a little square at the end or a little square over there. I'm not quite sure yet, but what I'm seeing is what I should do is just this massive area first, then worry about that. So this stuff is super easy to cut. It's only two millimeters thick. I'll put a link down in the description from the uh, website where I got the Lowe's is where I got it. So I'll put a link down below for that. But it's super easy to cut and uh, just a regular box cutter blade does it. And the one thing I'm seeing is that we're a little short still. But with the floor panel, we may be able to make that up. So if we put, just as an example here, that actually gets like right up to it almost. So what we may have to do is double up on the floor and that will get it up onto this ledge like I want up to here. And of course we'll have to fill in this little gap here too with more of that padding, but 
this is a kind of general idea, so that'll end up being a nice level floor like that. All the way across, as soon as you open it, right to the door with just, just a white edge, because uh, this is where the slider sits. So, I think what we're gonna do is glue from this end that way. Put this down here. We'll glue this side down, each panel, each square, across, and then when we get to that end, we'll have to cut around that uh, trim as well, kind of like how we did here, uh, just by feeling it and getting it relatively close. So I still gotta pound out that little dent there, take care of that, and then we'll start gluing. First layer went down really easy. Um, that caulking gun makes putting that glue on super nice um, on all the ribs and then also on the bottom, um, the big flat areas, especially along the corners, really making sure those are stack, uh, <laughs> tacky is what I'm trying to say. But it's on there and it's gonna take a little bit to dry, um, you know, just to really set. But um, I put another layer on top off camera trying to play with it. And even with too thick, there's still a a dip that you can feel with the with the vinyl and or laminate whatever you want to call it and I don't really want to have that because it, it's asking for that front lip to start peeling as you step into it you might trip on it stuff like that and just it'll peel up and look horrible so I think what we're gonna do is start from this as our corner I know there's a curve here but if we start as this as our straight corner come across here then we can cut a small piece to fill this gap and just leave this and we'll put a rubber I don't know, trim, border, rail thing. Because my number one concern is I don't want this to be completely retention to where if you, if it rains on this, let's say, and you open the door to go to the restroom while you're camping and water gets in, I want to be able to brush that water out easily without having to fight a massive lip of scooping out the water over and over and over and over again and it just getting stuck in there and having to use a towel. And I just want to be able to brush it out and not retain moisture within this. So now this first one is done, we're gonna start working on this back edge here with that panel I initially cut. See how I can make this fit. Um, I might cut it into smaller sections and do them vertical. Might be the best bet to make sure we have nice squared off edges all the way to the corner. Granted, we're gonna have this back bench in here and we're gonna have cabinets back here. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but we're gonna cut that one out, glue that down, and then we will do another layer of this on top and really let that set. And then we'll start playing with the vinyl boards uh, that are on top there in here. So we definitely wanna start in this corner, work across, and we are gonna carry it up through the walkway there. So we're just, you know, trying not to get out of our head ourselves, but it's gonna look really, really good. So let's start cutting up some more and really time-lapse all this, put the other layer, get, it, get this show on the road.
time for some updates and the floor is in. I'm actually really satisfied with it. It actually didn't take too long. That peel and stick is really nice. Um, better than tongue and groove because it's just going to be way more flexible with going down the road and stuff like that, durability. So it all looks pretty good. But so we did the main area and we did the walkway between the seats. So are you ready? It's going to look really good. All right, let's take a look. Well, what do you think? I think it looks really, really good. Nice squared off to the front. Be able to follow the contours with a little scrap piece. Do have a little bit of the silver poking through, but we can cut that out. Contours the front. Nice and square in the back. And it comes up into the walkway there. Best part is it happened to fall right where the longest piece is going to be right in the middle. A little bit of wiggle room here, but still need to put a little bit more glue on that. Some of these sections that on a little bit of a curve or in a high traffic area, I added a little bit of extra glue of the liquid nail underneath it. Not all of them, but you know, the ones around the edges I'm not super worried about, but high traffic spots are gonna have the extra. Same thing, especially with between there, lots of extra, put some weights on it, really let it cure overnight and check it in the morning, which I'm sure it's gonna be just fine. But this looks way, way better than that just plain white. We even took some paint, some spray paint and just kind of went up the sides to hide the white a little bit kind of peeled off on me there but we'll repaint it but yeah way way better it wasn't too bad to do so the question is what did it cost well we got a whole box of these planks these vinyl planks and there's 40 in a box it was 77 dollars for all 40 and we ended up using maybe half a box so maybe about 25 just to be conservative we're probably going to end up keeping the whole box just to have extras of this just in case any happen to fall out or they get damaged or peel or whatever. Now we have some extra to replace it with down the road so we're not in a gung-ho to go return them. You could if you wanted to, but you know we're not too keen on it. The padding, the blue with the silver backing, that was $45 for 100 square feet of it. Obviously, we didn't use all of it, um, but doubling it up um, really made it way more forgiving. And that foam insulation is really nice for underneath where our radiator sits, along with that sound bending sheet that we put on there as well. And the liquid nail bottles, I think, were like three fifty, four bucks a piece. And I got two of them. I went through one and a half to get the whole thing done, so not too bad at all. So for about one hundred twenty-five bucks, if my math is right, yeah, about one hundred twenty-five bucks, we put it on a whole new floor into the bus. Uh, it's not kind of the flex seal that we sealed it with, but it looks really, really good. I'm super happy with it, and it's super durable and it does have that little bit of flex to it which we really need going down the road and driving and camping and using it so this is kind of a quick short video for you guys um, just a really quick uh, way to make it like we're actually doing something not just working on mechanicals all the time so we're making good progress I just wanted to have the floor and now we can start building stuff around it so panels um, are probably gonna be next and then we're probably gonna work our way up to a kind of like a solid wood cedar roof i don't know that's down the road but this was uh, pretty simple pretty straightforward and totally doable um and i have no experience laying this stuff down at all and it was pretty straightforward which i'm happy with so thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it make sure you like comment and subscribe subscribing really really helps the channel so please make sure you do that that way we continue to grow and work on cars like these and others in the future bringing you free content here on youtube Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you.